Today, I finally get to complete my journey into the Yukon Territory, leaving the rough but beautiful Cassiar Highway in the rear view. But a wrench has been thrown into my plans once again, with the all too familiar sight of wildfire smoke. Last night, I stayed right at the confluence of French Creek and the Dease River, which is one of my favorite camp spots along this section. It's also where I got to do my three-day drift fishing trip last year. I wanted to do something similar again this year, but as far as I can tell, the wildfires are only a few more kilometers up the highway and only a couple kilometers off of the highway. And I can't really risk leaving the motorhome for days at a time, and I really can't risk not getting through. So this year, we're pushing on. The next couple of days are big travel days, but it's a great opportunity to revisit some of my favorite camp spots and some of the spots that I missed last year. That's the Yukon, baby. We're back. Woo! When I stayed in this spot last year, I didn't get to do any fishing. One of my big fishing goals this year is to catch a pike on the fly. There's no pike in this creek here. Honestly, I don't know if there's anything in here, but I just want to get out, get some casts down and get my shoulder warmed up and ready for some larger fish this year. Fish in this little mosquito pattern, barbless. Should be all right. There is no shortage of mosquitoes here. <laughs> Getting lots of nibbles from little guys out here, but nothing substantial yet. This river is so beautiful. I actually made my coffee this morning with river water. <laughs> I have a few more hours driving before we get to the lake. I want to try for a pike. So I think I'll enjoy this a little while longer, then hit the road. To be honest with you guys, this was an awesome camp spot, but the approach is kind of sketch. Holy smokes! Absolute freaking windstorm today, which is not very much fun in the motorhome, but it totally eliminates our chance to get out and do some fly fishing, so hopefully it clears up. But if not, there's always a plan C. Go! Bright eyed little boat caught in the middle of the rights, the wrongs, the way do we belong. And then the world was heavy. Why didn't mama tell me that the devil's songs seem beautiful? Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. City center, Pike Town, ready to get into some monsters. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know how to catch a pike. Tried it last year with zero success, but it's not the first time you guys have seen me staring right into the face of adversity. Plus, I've been doing some looking on the Google machine. It says all you need is a fishing rod, so I'm practically there. Fishing on a nine foot six weight, I realize that's a light rod for a large fish. I have an eight weight with me as well, but it'd be a lot of fun to get one on the six. Fishing that bad, Sal. If I was to guess, I'd say probably first cast. It's happening. It's really happening. 
It wasn't the first cast, I'm not gonna lie. But it was up there. <laughs> Look at him. I'm going for it. Come over here. <gasps> I can hardly freaking believe it. Look it. He popped the hook as he was going in the net. I'm not gonna lie. It's not that big of a pike. <laughs> but I am freaking stoked. Let's let him go. I'm all about achieving goals. That happened awfully quick. <laughs> Let's try for another. Oh, honey hole right here. I am on absolute fire here. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's number two right there. Woo. <gasps> number three. Feels a little bit bigger, but not massive. Well, I don't know. He was definitely wrapped in the weeds. Number three, right there. Hoo, 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 hoo. This was totally wild. It was a windstorm all the way here, and then perfectly calm when we got here. Got into four pike, landed three, and now the wind is just picking up. It's also almost eight o'clock in the afternoon, so let's head back to the motorhome feeling great. You guys are not gonna believe what happened. I went back out fishing today because I figured this might be a great opportunity to do an episode of the Moho Cooking Show, but I didn't bring, I only brought the GoPro with me because I didn't plan to film much of it. And same as yesterday, right away, got into this beautiful little pike bigger than any of the ones we caught yesterday. But it happened so quickly, I figured I would keep fishing and I was just getting ready to launch a freaking rocket ship of a fly cast and a big gust of wind came and blew the fly into my back like full speed. Lucky for me, it didn't hook me. It just ricocheted off and then fell into the water. And as I was trying to retrieve all the slack, a monster smashed it. Unfortunately, he spit the hook as I was trying to net him because he was too big to fit in the net. So I kept fishing, got into another one, and it actually broke my leader, unfortunately, another really nice fish. I know we're out here targeting pike, but I got a freaking hog on here right now. And then got into this tank. <laughs> Look at this thing. Third time's the charm. I think I have another nice one on here. Just put a new fly on. He's really testing my rod here. <laughs> I should have maybe brought the eight weight. And then kept fishing and got in to this tank. Oh. I cannot believe this line is holding up. Fishing with eight pound test here. <laughs> Oh, beauty. Wow. <laughs> so today, I'm gonna cook up my first ever pike. Welcome to another episode of the Moho Cooking Show. I'm super excited about this episode because we're gonna try a couple things I've never tried before. The thing about pike is they're full of Y bones. So you have to fillet them in a very certain way uh, that leaves you with five different fillets, but it also leaves a lot of meat on the bone. So I'm gonna boil this down into uh, broth and make uh, fish soup, as well as just fry up a couple of the fillets so we can get a good taste of what pike is like. The water is just getting to a boil, so I'm gonna throw in the fish and then start working on some veg. My pot is almost not big enough. <laughs> I am following a bit of a recipe for this, but being here in the north, I'm really limited with what I can access for supplies. So we're gonna start off with 
a whole medium sized carrot. And I'll be chopping this into pretty large pieces. I'll also be adding in, of course, some celery. The recipe calls for an entire medium onion. That seems a little much to me, so I'm just using half. You can't really make anything without garlic, so I'm putting in a half a bulb. Half a clove, half a bulb. There's a couple things in this recipe I've not heard of before, one of which being bay leaves. They smell very good, and the recipe calls for one large bay leaf. That doesn't seem like much, so I'm actually gonna put a few. And the thing about this recipe is, I'm assuming the bones are all gonna come off of this pike inside the pot. So I'm gonna have to strain off everything and then possibly redo the veggies. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna do like a small handful of these leaves. The other foreign spice is something called cloves. Never heard of this before, but I'll be honest with you guys, it does not smell like something I would like to ingest, so it's staying out of my recipe. It also calls for two peppercorns. That doesn't seem like much to me, so I'm gonna add like a half a dozen. <laughs> it calls for fresh parsley, but that's not an option here in the north, so I'm just gonna add a bit of dried and crushed. It should be all right. Each recipe I look at calls for a cup of dry white wine. That doesn't sound like a flavor I want in my soup, so I'm gonna skip it. <laughs> and it also calls for two tablespoons of unsalted butter. Again, not an option here in the north, but I found this garlic and herbs butter. It smells great. Our water's up to a nice boil here, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in the vegetables, but even just with the fish and the butter, it's smelling already super good. I think that butter was a good choice. Oh, this is looking tasty. The neat thing about doing a fish broth is you don't need to let it simmer for hours and hours like a chicken or beef. It really only takes like 45 minutes to an hour, so. Mm. This has been simmering for about three beers now, and it smells, no joke, like maybe the best thing I've ever made. A lot of the meat has come off the bone, but also there's a lot of bones mixed in there, so I don't know how much of the meat I'm gonna be able to salvage. So I've diced up a couple different fillets that I'll add into the soup afterwards, and then I kept three different fillets out to fry up. I kept, uh, tail filet from the medium fish, a uh, side filet from the smallest, and a side filet from the largest, so we have a bit of a variety. But let's strain this out and see what we got. So this came out pretty much how I expected. Lots of bones mixed in with this, but I have a piece here that's just come out of the pot. I'm gonna give it a try. See all the bones in there? Mmm. Wow, that is really good. Mmm. It's too bad all that meat is gonna get wasted. Next time I'm out pike fishing, I'm gonna find a better way to try and salvage some of that meat. I thought it was gonna dissolve and then I could pick through it. That's not gonna be an option here, but this broth is gonna be fantastic. It smells amazing. It is a thousand degrees in the motorhome right now, <laughs> but I am really proud of this. It is smelling so good in here. I'm gonna start off with the filet, just because I wanna know what the just the pike tastes like. All I've seasoned this with, I use that butter. That is my jam. That is good stuff. Other than that, just a little bit of salt and pepper. Bon appetit. Wow, that is really good fish. Really nice and soft. And very similar to halibut, actually. Mmm. 
Wow. That is substantially better than I thought. I knew it was gonna be good. I did not expect that good. Holy smokes. And it's perfectly done, actually. I was worried I was gonna overdo it. It's nice. Let's try this soup. Oh my God. <laughs> this is also really good. I do this moho cooking show because I love to harvest and live off the land, but I've never considered myself much of a chef. <laughs> Both of these things are way better than I should be able to make. But it's getting late, so I need to eat them, and I need to open some windows. Thanks for watching, everybody. As always, take nothing but pictures, leave nothing but footprints. I'll catch you on the next one. Take my money, steal my car, and sell my clothes.